Friday. So yesterday we made these jars of pickled okra. It's just refrigerator pickled okra. Oh, they're smelling good. I forgot to put the garlic in them. So real quick, we're going to put a garlic clove in each one because they still have a whole day that they have to stay in the refrigerator before we can eat them. So I can't believe I forgot it, but I did. Cece already put one in that one. She's getting the other one ready. She's using the lemon squeezer to pop it. We have a little garlic thing somewhere yeah these are smelling good today yesterday when we made the mixture for them on the stove with the apple cider vinegar and the white vinegar sissy was like what it did smell pretty stout and especially if you put your nose right down there to it it would take your breath away but now they're smelling great i'm tempted to try one but we must wait at least a full two days so we'll put our tops back on take them back to the refrigerator if y'all missed that video, I'll link it down below. That's amazing. I made it in stop with my power. I'm about to come over here and wash these dishes with my power. Dishwashing power. It's great. It's like one of my strongest powers. Somebody used a Christmas bowl for snack time today. Getting in the holiday spirit. Because tomorrow is the first day of fall, officially the first day of fall. I made some coffee earlier and forgot about it, but thankfully it's still hot over here. I'm looking for the remote because this, oh, oh there it is. I put on some autumn jazz to listen to while I drink my coffee and write down the songs because we're playing at a church this weekend. And I have to chart a couple of songs that are new ones because I don't know what I'm doing. And if I don't have these songs charted, I will mess up. But if I have them charted and I can look at them, should be good. Thankfully, the boys and even Cece got uh, their musical talent from their dad because mommy has none. So I have two or three that I need to write down and chart. And I actually had them charted because the church that we played at the weekend before last, I had them charted for that church and I cannot find them anywhere. I searched the van. I might have left them at the church. I've done that before. I've left my entire songbook at a church before. So I'm gonna write these songs and then look through some cookbooks. I got two new ones. This one is Celebrating Southern Appalachian Food by Jim Cassida and Tipper Presley. So Tipper has a channel here on YouTube called Celebrating Appalachia. I'm sure most of y'all know about her channel. I love it. I'll link her channel down below. And the link for the cookbook is, I'm sure in most of her recent videos, description boxes. I ordered it from her Etsy shop. And the first American cookbook, y'all. 1796 was the year that these recipes were first published. Not this book, of course, it's a remake of it, but 1796. I can't even understand some of these words or recipes. I'll give y'all one for an example, but we're gonna try some of these. I mean, this was like way back in the day, okay? We'll read this little beginning part here. As this treat it's hard to, I mean, the S's seriously look like F's unless they're at the end of a word, they look like an S. But if they're mixed in, or even at the beginning of some words, they look like an F. Okay, as this, something. It's calculated for the improvement of the rising generation of females in America. The lady of fashion and fortune will not be displeased. Looks like diff plift right here. I'll show y'all, see that? That is an S. But anyway, displeased if many hints are suggested, it's not an F, suggested for the more general and universal, universal knowledge of those females in this country who by the loss, loss, but it, I mean, look, why is this S normal? Look, loss, that's, that is the word loss, but it looks like L-O-F-S. Loss of their, where was I? loss of their parents or other unfortunate circumstances, domestics or taking, I've, I don't even know what I've read so far because it's so different. 
Anybody out there know? We could probably Google it. Why did S's look like F's in the 1700s? Some of the S's, that's what's weird about it. It's just some of them. I thought we were gonna be talking about cooking and now we're talking about people's mama and daddy dying and now they've become orphans and I'm sad. What is happening? Let's get on to the recipes. Okay, hmm. How to chew f flip. <laughs> I wish Titus was here because he could really be having some fun with this. How to choose flesh. How to choose what kind of meat, I guess, to serve. We're gonna skip that part and go on to maybe a recipe or something. If we can find one. It was only $5 and something. I can see why, because what can you cook out of it? I don't know, okay, okay, here's a chicken pie. Pick and clean. Oh, I almost said fix chickens, that's six. Six, pick and clean six chickens for a chicken pie. They got big families, very big families. Pick and clean six chickens without scalding. Take out their inwards and wash the birds while whole. Then joint the birds, salt and pepper the pieces and inwards. Roll one inch thick paste number eight. Paste number eight. And cover a deep diff dish. It's, it's, it's almost fun to say it with the F instead of the S. Put there too a layer of chickens and a layer of thin slices, I almost said slices, of butter till the chickens and one and a half pound butter are expended, which cover with a thick paste. Bake one and a half hour. There you go. They, they definitely use butter. And while boiling, thicken the residue of the gravy and when the pie is drawn, drawn? Drawn? And when the pie is drawn, open the crust and add the gravy. Drawn. Done, maybe? Does that mean done in the 1700s? I'm drawn with this book. <laughs> a foot pie. Scald neat's feet and clean well. What are neats? I don't know what are neats. Grass, oh, grass fed are best. Grass fed neats feet are best. <laughs> Y'all thought I was gonna make some recipes from this book, but I don't think so. We'll just read it from time to time. Anyway, yes, we'll just, we'll continue studying on this one here and see what we can find to make in here. It's gonna be exciting. I'm glad I wasn't born in the 1700s. Okay, back to the songs. I hope I don't start writing my S's as like an F without the line like that, because now it's stuck in my head. <laughs> Here they come. Last night was a win, y'all. Every single chicken went back in their coop. There were no stragglers. Even Miss, look at Roosty Chase's Miss Turkey when they get out. <laughs> Everybody put themselves up last night. It was wonderful. Okay, y'all, we are back inside. Little change of plans. Everybody's gonna be late tonight. Jake's going bowling. Titus is working late. And Tyler is going to help some people set up a tent for a festival tomorrow. So I just ordered pizza to be delivered because all of them are gonna eat something before they come home. I decided to take the cooking night off as far as cooking supper. We are gonna make a dessert. I'm getting my pans out here. Let's see, I just need this one pan. I need to make some tea though. So we got Papa John's pizzas and they do have a couple of dessert things but we don't really like Papa John's desserts. So we're gonna make stovetop chocolate dumplings, okay? You don't even have to bake them. We're gonna do it all on the stove top. And I mainly picked chocolate dumplings for Jacob and Tyler because they love chocolate things, which Jonah and Sissy do too, but I mainly picked the chocolate ones for them and now they're not even gonna be here, but that's fine. We'll save them some. We're gonna start with three quarters of a cup of brown sugar in the pot here. We're making the sauce first. There's that. We need a quarter cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, baking cocoa. One tablespoon of cornstarch. What you looking for? Cheese? Yes. We need a dash of salt. We'll mix this together and we're gonna put in two cups of water. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it to medium. We're also gonna need two tablespoons of butter, but we won't put that in until this comes to a boil. While we're waiting on it to boil, we'll go ahead and make the dumpling mix. First, we need one and one fourth of a cup of all-purpose flour two teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt, half a cup of sugar, all right, two tablespoons of the cocoa powder. 
So we'll whisk all this together and then we're going to cut in three tablespoons of butter. So we're just going to cut it into small little pieces just like I do when I make biscuits. And this butter was cold so it's really easy to cut in. It's not melting as I'm holding it or anything. Okay, we're almost done. This is really easy. We're going to put in one beaten egg. Okay, we're boiling over here, so I'm gonna just remove this from the heat just for a moment and stir in those two tablespoons of butter. We'll just let it stay right here because once we get the dumplings made, we're gonna put it back on the heat and add the dumplings in. Back over here in the dumpling bowl, we need one third of a cup of milk and a teaspoon of vanilla. There's the chocolate dumpling dough. All right, we put the chocolate sauce back on the heat. We're gonna bring it to a boil. When it starts to boil, we're gonna drop in little spoonfuls of the dumpling dough. Then, when we get all the dumplings in there, we're gonna reduce the heat all the way down to low and put a top on it, and it's just gonna sit over here and simmer for about 20 minutes to cook the dumplings. By the way, I did Google about that S, looking like an S thing. Turns out, in the 1700s, there was a long S and they ended up changing it whenever they started using italic writing because in italic, the S, the long S really looked like a lowercase f but without the little crossbar. So they ended up just going to strictly using the regular S. Thank goodness, because that is crazy. <laughs> I don't even think we need any words. This is wonderful. So it's very, very similar to the chocolate cobbler recipe, only in dumpling form, and you didn't have to bake it in the oven. You just did it on the stove top. It's great, and this is coming from somebody who is not a big chocolate fan, but these chocolate dumplings and that chocolate cobbler, they turn even non-chocolate lovers into chocolate lovers. <laughs> if you want a dessert but you're not ready for pumpkin yet, make this. 